Okay, so let's talk about just ways, common ways that people end up accidentally diminishing. And um, maybe what I'll do, there's nine that I see on a regular basis, but let me start with the couple that are, are my vulnerabilities and then the ones that we see really frequently. Okay. For me, like what gets me is I am an idea guy. Like I'm a fountain of ideas. And these leaders, they think like they're full of ideas. Hey, what about this? Why don't we try this? Have you considered this? Well, why don't we do a task force? Why don't we? And they think what they're doing is that their ideas are stimulating other people's ideas. You know, they want a creative, innovative, like rich environment. They think they're getting the party started, but what happens around these leaders is other people don't have to think like, well, okay, you know, either I spend my days running around trying to implement Liz's ideas, or I don't actually need to think very hard. I'll just like ask Liz what she thinks. Like we become idea lazy around people who are idea rich. That's one. I am so guilty of this. I have to learn all the time how to turn off my idea guy. And I do it by um, like asking myself a singular question. When I get all wound up on a new idea, ooh, this would be fun, we should try this. I say, Liz, do you want the people on your team to stop what they're doing and work on this right now? The answer is almost always no. Yeah. Like, then you know what? Take out a piece of paper. Like I keep, you know, a stack of post-it notes handy and I just like write my ideas down. I stick them places and say, you know, that last a day or even a week, I'll bring it up at the next team meeting. But so, so being like idea rich, is one. Um, another one of my vulnerabilities is I am optimistic, as I mentioned. And you would think that my team would very much appreciate my optimism, but not everyone does. Like we find that optimistic leaders often overlook, you know, these are hopeful, positive, that see upside, they often overlook struggle and challenge. And like right now, like people need to know that their leaders understand how hard things are. Yeah. Because they're isolated, because they're trying to work virtually when they've been working physically, because the economy is is um, tight or um, oppressive even. Uh, so I've learned to spend more time like understanding the struggle and saying things like, hey, what we're doing is hard. We might not succeed at this a lot more time talking about the downside hmm. so that people around me understand that i get it and they can focus on the upside so those are two i struggle with here here's the key to understanding accidental diminisher tendencies it's really understanding two things one is it's understanding the difference between your intent and your impact like hmm. you're actually trying to generate innovation and creativity but your impact is that you've provided all of it so other people don't need to do it or they're they're too busy running around following you. So your impact is to decrease innovation. The other important thing to like to fix this is to understand that every one of the accidental diminisher tendencies, and I'll mention the three most popular ones in a, in a second here, is their virtues. Like we want optimistic organizations. Yeah. We want idea rich organizations but what happens is if the leader does too much of it, his or herself, if they embody that cultural value, then we have optimistic and innovative management, but not a broad organization. Like yeah. these are all things you want. You want people to move fast, but you want it on your team. And sometimes the best way for the team to become this is for the leader to be a little less of it. Hmm. So the, the other ways that we see this happen a lot is um, uh, rapid responders, uh, managers who are like moving quick. They, you know, they see a text, they answer a text, they an email comes in, they want their team to move fast, so they move fast. You know, if, if the manager is so quick to respond, then nobody else gets to do their job. Nobody else gets to take accountability because that manager has just taken it from them. So the little rule I use, I've had some rapid responder um, tendencies in the past is I use a 24 hour hands off rule, which means if an email comes in and one just came in on Friday, 
it was sent to me and one other person on my team who was actually the one responsible for this project. Well, I knew he was out for a bit in a meeting and he wasn't gonna get to this. And my fingers are on the keyboard, I'm about to reply. Because I'm like, oh, this is important and this person's gonna wanna hear from us. And I just take my fingers off the keyboard and I'm like, 24 hours, hands off. Which gives him a chance to come back from his meeting, come back from his son's little league game, whatever it is, and take ownership and responsibility. But people can't take ownership for something unless the manager lets go of it. Yeah. And so I do 24 hours, meaning I give other people a chance to respond, but if they don't respond, then I'm all over it. And usually it's, hey, this is yours, not mine. You know, can you get back to this person? Um, so rapid responding. The other is pace setting, meaning, you know, being the example of, let's say there's kind of a desire to be more market focused. So it's like, hey, let's read up what's happening in the industry and really knowing what what's going on in the economy, the market, or knowing what's happening with our customers. So the manager's like, okay, I want my whole team to do that. So I will, I'll lead the way. I'll model that. I'll spend time reading up on the market, spending time out in the field with our customers, knowing what issues they're dealing with. And what happens is they're thinking, I'll lead the way, I'll get out ahead, set the pace for the team, and other people will follow. But actually what happens is people hold back and they they watch. Like when we set the pace for our team, we more often create spectators than followers. Hmm. And you know, like sometimes you have to put that slower person or the more junior person out in front and let them lead. Yeah. Something I learned hiking with four kids. <laughs> like take the youngest that everyone's yeah. saying, Joshua, go faster. Why can't you keep up? I'm like, hey, Josh, you know what? On this next segment, why don't you lead and set the pace for your older brothers, bro other brother and sister? Yeah. Well, what do you think what happens when I put Joshua out in front? He now picks up the pace and others are having trouble keeping up with him. Hmm. And the leader, you know, sometimes needs to, to march in the back.